All right, guys, today we got a special treat. We have a guest in the shop. Hi, my name is Ben Pegg from Wolby Design. Ben has a really cool channel where he makes things out of recycled skateboards and he does really cool woodworking projects out of them. Uh, his channel will be linked below. Please go check him out. We're also going to be doing a video with these skateboards. We're going to be cutting some dovetails. That'll be over on Ben's channel. Uh, so that's going to be really cool. Um, so Ben reached out to me and said, hey, uh, I want to learn to cut some dovetails. And I said, great, come on up. And one of the things that Ben runs into in his shop is he makes these massive skateboard blanks to get you know usable lumber out of. And that is something that is really hard to resaw because it's oddly shaped and it's very heavy. Uh, so I'm gonna take you guys and Ben through the process of setting up the bandsaw for great uh, resaw results. And uh, we're gonna show you several different ways. One with oddly shaped items as if you had your own log and you were trying to make lumber out of it. Or when you have a nice square piece of lumber, how I would resaw that into multiple pieces so that we can get great usable lumber that not only is book matched, but uh, is all the same size. So uh, let's get into it. I think the first tip I could give anybody on the bandsaw is if you've done everything we're about to talk about in this video and you're still not getting good results, replace your blade. That's it, just need a sharp blade. So um, we're gonna get into it. I have a long form video on this where we tune up the bandsaw and I show you how to set it up. That's gonna be linked right here in the corner. So if you want an expanded version of this, check out that video. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna take off the table of my table saw so that we can see what's going on and, and it's really easy to set up. All right, so our first step is gonna be you wanna back off all of your guides. That includes your thrust bearings and your side guides. Um, so you wanna back those all the way off and then put your blade on and I'm gonna show you how we tension it. All right, so here's the important part. Now you would think that this blade is centered on your wheel and that's good, but that's not what you want. You want the back of the gullet to be centered on the crown of the wheel. So you can see here that my gullets are right on the crown of my wheel. And you don't want the teeth and you don't want the center of the blade on the crown. You want that gullet because as you cut, you want the center of tension to be your cutting area. And if it's not, then the back of your blade will affect the front of your cut. But now it's sort of like towing a trailer. The, the gullets and the teeth are towing a trailer, which is the back of your blade. So once you get that set, you can lock it in. And we're pretty good. You want to spin it, do a few revolutions and make sure it's staying there. And then you can lock that in. Now let's talk about tension, Ben. I would not pay attention to the tension guide on your bandsaw. It's just kind of an arbitrary thing. I mean, you don't even know how somebody set it in the factory in Taiwan. So you want to make sure that uh, you're testing. And what you want to do is be able to have about a quarter inch of deflection uh, without your finger turning white. Sort of the pressure I would use to push a crosswalk button or something like that. And if you can get it to move a quarter inch, you're good. And I think you were saying, compared to what you've been doing, this is very, very tight. Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's probably tighter than you think and you you want just about a quarter inch of deflection when you push on it and without really you know hurting yourself or putting too much pressure on your finger. Um, let's get into some guides. All right, so the first things we're gonna want to do is our side guides. And the reason we do that is because they have a very specific place in which they need to be. And that is just slightly behind the gullet. So we wanna adjust these front to back if your bandsaw has that adjustment. And you can see right there, my guide is just about a quarter of a millimeter behind that gullet, and that is the exact right place. You don't want it to be any further than that because your teeth have set, so they stick out to one side or another. So if you do that, then your teeth are gonna be rubbing on your gullet, I'm sorry, on your guide bearing, dulling your blade and ruining your, your guide. So once you're set front to back, you're good. We don't have to set these yet. We're gonna work on our thrust bearing next. So our thrust bearings, you want to be almost touching. And I've heard people say a folded dollar bill or a feeler gauge, but really it's way easier than that. You don't have to worry about it. So this is very simple to do. What I do is I push it up against the blade so that I'm not pushing it forward, but just so that it rests on the blade. And then I just take my finger and I just touch it a little bit until it's not touching and then I tighten it. And the way you can tell that you've done it right is you can see light behind it, but when you press on it, it touches the bearing. So that's about perfect. That may even be too big of a gap, but it's just about right there. I'm gonna probably slide that forward just a fraction of an inch. Um, but if you can push it without hurting your finger on the teeth and it rotates, then you're in the right place. Okay, for our side bearings, basically the same thing. 
uh, very simple to do. Whether you have bearings or these are guides, uh, they're low friction something or another, um, I just take them and I press them onto my blade so that I'm not changing where the blade is. So I just press them on there and I just take my finger and tap them over just a little bit till we got light. And then I tighten them down. And again, you wanna be able to rotate your wheel without these spinning. All right, so you saw me using a engineer's square to get it square, and that usually gets it pretty close, but here's a really easy way to check. We're gonna take this board and make a kerf, and then we're gonna spin it around and slide the blade back into our kerf with the saw off. And as long as it fits and doesn't look like it's slanted from one corner to the other of that kerf, then you're totally square. Ben, how tall are skateboards usually? It so usually ranges around eight inches. Okay, perfect. So as you can see here, just like if you had like a log of walnut and you were trying to turn it into lumber, we're just, we don't have a good reference area. And so when we go to resaw, there's just gonna be no way to get a straight cut. So what we're gonna do is create a jig like I would for a log where we're gonna fix the back into the jig. It's gonna be a right angle jig uh, made out of plywood where we can slide the whole jig against the fence. So we have a nice flat area against the fence, a flat area against the table, and we can choose where we set that fence and we can get that straight cut. So we're gonna head over to the table saw, whip up a quick right angle jig and come back here to the table saw. All right, so when you're resawing something like this, you just need to get a flat side. You can, so you can see maybe our fence isn't dead, dead square, you know, maybe 89.9 degrees. And you can see the skateboards are sort of suspended on this edge, that doesn't matter. Our goal is to use the flat reference side of the end of our sled to get one flat side. And then because we know our sled is flat, once we get that, we can turn this 90 degrees, we can get another 90 degree cut. And then it's just like milling lumber. So we're gonna go ahead and throw it on here. This thing weighs, what do you think? 80 pounds, 50 pounds. This is a lot of skateboards, boys uh, and ladies. So we're gonna get this thing, we're gonna get a flat side, rotate it 90 degrees. We're gonna screw it into our sled again, get another flat side, and then we're gonna decide how we're gonna process our lumber for the dovetail video that's gonna be on Ben's channel. So let's get moving. just right off the bandsaw with that just simple setup method, we were getting square cuts, which anybody who's used a bandsaw knows that that is impressive. I mean, usually a bandsaw gets you pretty close, but then you do some further milling. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna end this here, head over to Ben's channel, check it out, because we are now gonna mill these up and cut some dovetails out of yes. skateboard blanks. Well, first time it's ever been done, as far as I know, and I know a lot about dovetails. So guys, stay safe in the shop. If you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store. Get yourself stop blocking. I got one. <laughs> yeah, baby. T-shirt or a dovetail jig uh, or a Suzanne saw. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.